50 years ago today, in a loft of this old San Francisco building, electronic television was born. 21-year-old Philo T. Farnsworth transmitted a single line of light on a system he dreamed up in high school. That historic experiment recreated here by some of his early associates. The light bounced into a crude camera and transmitted across the room. The idea of television was not new even in 1927, but Farnsworth was the first to demonstrate that the pictures could be broken down into electrical impulses. The next step was to assemble many lines of light into pictures, these snapshots off the screen from the early transmissions. And from there, motion films. Farnsworth figured out a way to transmit the first Mickey Mouse cartoon, Steamboat Willie, from his laboratory to his house. His son, Philo T. Farnsworth III, watched a lot of Mickey. Uh, yes, we had a TV at home. A lot of the engineers' kids did. And they, they, we, there was an experimental uh, broadcast uh, program uh, going on most of the time. And uh, so we were indeed the video kids, the first video kids. Mr. Philo T. Farnsworth, shown at the right, is working on the image dissector tube. By the mid-1930s, as this theater newsreel noted, the state of the art was progressing. It may not be long before our news events and current world happenings will be witnessed in thousands of homes. But World War II held up development of television, and it wasn't until the late 1940s that home receivers like these began coming off the assembly lines. As far as we know, Farnsworth himself appeared on commercial television only once, on I've Got a Secret in 1957. Is this some kind of a machine that might be painful when it's used? Uh, yeah, sometimes it's most painful. <laughs> Farnsworth died in 1971. This morning, his family and some of those who worked in the labs with him gathered in a museum near San Francisco to commemorate the day, a half century ago, when he first sent electronic pictures through the air. His widow recalled the first time he put her on TV, the lights were so bright she closed her eyes. And she also recalled how discouraged he was sometimes in his later years that his invention was not being constructively used. He made the statement several times that uh, uh, he thought he'd maybe wasted his time because of the programming. But uh, then when uh, we saw the, the first man on the moon, he just changed his mind. <laughs> he thought it was all worthwhile. Farnsworth died two years after the lunar landing. He had seen the lines of light from his early laboratory go to the moon and back to Earth. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, Los Altos, California. That's the news this Wednesday night. I'm Roger Mudd, CBS News. Good night.